Okay, so in this world, you have people that do and people that say. The people that say, they say they're going to do something really cool and interesting, but they never really get to doing something really cool and interesting. And then you have the people that do, and they go and do the really cool thing that's interesting, and they tell you about it afterwards. And I've found that Brie Larson definitely seems to be the latter. She is someone that goes out and does and then she tells you about it later. Not only that, but she's becoming a great ally to the black community. And this is why she's one of my diversity heroes and we're gonna talk about that in this video. So if you wanna know why, you wanna know how, know what's going on, let's go. What I am saying is, is that if you make a movie that is a love letter to women of color, there is an insanely low chance a woman of color will have the chance to see your movie and review your movie. Welcome to video 8 in this 10 part series here on Hakuna Machata in which I am talking, chatting, discussing about some of my diversity heroes. These are people that are at the forefront leading the way for better representation within the film and TV industry. Full disclaimer though before I start I've got to say that these videos have kind of been love letters to these people and Brie Larson's my celebrity crush so yeah I'm probably gonna fall simp here. Sorry. All right, if we're gonna talk Brie Larson diversity representation, we're gonna start at that speech two years ago, 2018, when she put a call out for more diversity in the press pool of critics reviewing films in Hollywood. I found that it was a great speech. I think what she was saying was so intrinsically important because at the time of her giving that speech, the press pool only 2.5% were minoritized women. And that does not represent, it doesn't represent America, it doesn't represent globally the world of people that are watching these films. You know, it was a speech that she was really, I think, misunderstood about. And I think actually it largely goes to something that people misunderstand about diversity, particularly about the word diversity, because when you hear that, it kind of sounds like someone else has to lose out on something in order for someone else to get something, but that's not the case. No, everyone just wants to be sharing at the same top of the mountain that's all that needs to happen and I guess it's kind of why words such as inclusion that Ava DuVernay prefers to use or phrases such as better representation that are better to use because it's not about ticking boxes and making up numbers it is about actually what is going on on screen what is going on behind screen are the correct voices in different diverse forms of storytelling being heard and being told and being allowed to speak their truths and this speech kind of leads back to what I was saying about Brie Larson doing rather than saying now obviously it's a speech so you're thinking hang on a minute Elliot she's definitely just saying she ain't doing anything but she did do something because she actually went out and she found a possible solution to the problem with the press pool not being diverse enough. And she states that actually all you need to do is add seats to the table. Nine seats, nine people need to be added to the press pool and already you better represent the people watching films. Bottom line is, is that if each of the top 100 films in a year added nine critics that are three underrepresented males, three white females, three underrepresented females, and the, the average critic pool would match the US population in just five years. Because here's the thing, and as she says in the speech, and I completely agree with her, if someone is reviewing a film as, as per her example, like A Wrinkle in Time, in which it is directed by Ava DuVernay, a black female director, a lot of the cast were female or black female, she wants to know what women and what black women think of that film. She wants to read their reviews. And I understand that because lived experience is so important and you're only gonna get that if you have, <laughs> you know, you're only gonna get a real proper insight into what that film is about from someone who shares that lived experience. Now disclaimer, I've also not seen A Wrinkle in Time. I'm pretty sure it's to do with magic and fairies and whatnot. I mean, I could be completely wrong. Sorry that I've not done the research on A Wrinkle in Time. However, when you bring it to Captain Marvel, for example, I completely understand why Brie Larson wants to hear what women think about that film. It is a love letter to women. If you don't agree with that, then I think you might have missed the point of the film. I don't know. And look, again, I don't have that lived experience, so I don't know, but it's just what I picked up about it. It was a very empowering film for women and I think there's one part of that film that intrinsically encapsul encapsulates we get there in the end encapsulates what I mean by that and it's the fact that there is no love interest to Captain Marvel to Carol Danvers and that her closest relationship in the film is with her best friend Maria Rambeau and I absolutely adore that scene after they hear the black box footage and you know, they finally, Carol Danvers and Maria, they finally reconnect as best friends after going, you know, through the years of struggle and pain that they have. I don't know, something about that scene just, you know, it told me something different. Industry has gone through a major growth 
we are expanding to make films that better reflect the people that buy movie tickets, but they are not allowed enough chances to read public discourse on these films by the people that these films were made for. But it's not just within Hollywood where Brie is influencing and better representing and changing and actually it's kind of outside and kind of the main thing I wanted to talk about in this video and how that she is becoming a better ally to the demographics of society she is not a part of, to the communities in society she is not a part of and in particular the black community and everything she did around the spike in momentum for Black Lives Matter at the beginning of 2020. The first thing that she did was on Instagram she took part in the Pass the Mic initiative in which white celebrities were giving over control of their Instagram accounts to members of the black community so that that person could come on and talk about Black Lives Matter to the white celebrities following. In the case of Brie Larson that's nearly seven million people so that's quite an important thing to do. She invited on Justina Omokua who took over Brie's account for the day and hosted a live video in which she was answering questions from Brie's followers about Black Lives Matter, about systemic racism, about police brutality. And it was it was a great video. She actually also brought someone else on to talk as well. And you just got to listen firsthand. And if you know you're not part of that community, you know, it's you have to listen to first-hand accounts because there's not a better way to learn. And so Brie passing the mic, giving the space for that to happen allowing black people to talk first rather than talk on behalf is a really new important nuance there in that discussion and then after the momentum in 2020 sort of began to dive down a bit Brie didn't stop there she started her youtube channel and she invited justina on again to talk about white allyship essentially was where that conversation went and how white people can become better allies to the black community and help them in stopping and ending systemic racism which of course is not just going to be done in one youtube video it's something that we all need to be working on but the fact that Brie is placing herself in the the middle and doing the work doing it very publicly as well I think is for me it was really important it was nice to see she's someone that I admire someone that I look up to in terms of acting and in terms of a person and then she was doing that as well so big thumbs up Brie Thanks. So for some Brie Larson recommendations, I would recommend going out and checking Room. If you've not seen that film, she gives a sublime performance in that. I mean, she won the Oscar for it, so that doesn't tell you how good that is. I don't know what does. Watch, rewatch Captain Marvel. Try and view it through the lens of a woman. I, you're never really going to be able to if you're not a woman, I understand. But, you know, try and think, okay, if I were a woman, would I love this film? And I, I think maybe, yeah, you would. That's not to say that all women just automatically love Captain Marvel. I understand that some might not, but yeah. But I also really recommend checking out Just Mercy as well. I've spoken about this film before on the channel, I'm sure. And if I've not, I don't know why I have not. Now, Brie doesn't have a massive role in this film. She's very much a supportive character. It's definitely more about the leads in that film. But one thing that she said in an interview is that being on the set for Just Mercy, there were times when she was most likely the only white person in the room due to the crew and the cast being majority black and understandable because you know you need those voices to tell that kind of film but she said it was a great starting point for which she could learn to become an ally to the black community so if you're looking for that kind of starting point as well go and check out Just Mercy and I just remembered when I spoke about Just Mercy it was in this video right here and I really recommend you check that out if like Brie you want to learn more about what's happening with the black community vis-a-vis -vis Black Lives Matter so on and so forth. Now in this series I've been talking a lot about gatekeepers and about the people that are making the decisions on what films get made and so in the next video I'm going to be talking about a very prominent and well-established gatekeeper within the film and TV industry and someone who is making incredible waves particularly going forward with what it is they're working on. Uh, we're going to be looking at one of I'm assuming Bree's mates Kevin Feige and seeing how Kevin Feige is a diversity hero. Probably sounds a bit crazy at first but if you know Kevin Feige you know what he's about then you'll know that it ain't that crazy at all and that'll be in the next video so if you want to see that you want to understand why Kevin Feige is on the list make sure you subscribe to this channel turn on that bell notification so you can be notified exactly when that video drops there are only two more videos to go in this series drop a big thumbs up if you've loved this series let me know what you think about Bree's work becoming an ally to the black community in the comment section down below and let me know if she's a bigger crush to you as she is to me. I kind of doubt it. Hakuna Machata.